in the previous video we learned about price elasticity of demand factors determinants of elasticity slope and elasticity revenue method midpoint method of price elasticity of demand now let's look at other demand elasticity other types of demand elasticities first one is income elasticity of demand income elasticity of demand measures how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in consumer's income it is computed as the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the income of consumer now remember all elasticities are measured by divide, dividing one percentage change by another as in case of the price elasticity we saw that the formula the way of calculation is that we divide percentage change in quantity demanded with the percentage change in price now for income elasticities we have we have to consider the types of good normal good inferior good so higher income raises the quantity demanded for normal good but lower the quantity demanded for inferior good so inferior good have this negative relation with income of consumer so if the income increases the quantity demanded for normal good will increase but if income increases the quantity demanded for inferior good decreases now the thing to take care is that there is nothing like inferior good or superior or normal good but this classification is kind in form of comparison between two types of good that which one is consider more better than other goods consumers regard as necessities tend to be income inelastic necessities basically the good that are required for minimum survival survival of someone of people so in the case of those good those necessities the elasticity is totally zero uh, income inelastic the elasticity income elasticity is totally zero because no matter what income of person is the necessity the good which are necessary for survival will be consumed by the consumer similarly the in the case of price elasticity for necessity uh, for necessities for the necessity goods the price elasticity is also zero because even if the price of such good rises increases the consumption cannot be reduced because they are necessary now goods consumer regard as luxuries tend to be income elastic now let's look at cross price elasticity of demand a measure of how much the quantity demanded of one good responds to a change in the price of another good basically the quantity demanded of particular good is changing due to change in price of some other good it is computed as the percentage change in quantity demanded of the first good or the good that we are considering the demand of which we are studying so the demand uh, the quantity demanded the percentage change in quantity demanded of the first good divided by the percentage change in the price of the second good or the other good now let's look at price elasticity of supply it is quite similar to the price elasticity of demand with some changes price elasticity of supply is a measure of how much the quantity supplied of a good responds to a change in price of that good price elasticity of supply is the percentage change in quantity supplied resulting from a percentage change in the price of the good these are some similar curves we had seen in the price elasticity of demand case like if elasticity is zero the line is totally a uh, vertical line and the slope and elasticity relation still works it's still the same now this is the curve this is the case for elasticity is less than 1 and it is when elasticity is equal to 1 and this is when elasticity is greater than 1 and here is the case when elasticity is infinity and we can see there is some difference between the demand curve and supply curve now let's look at the price elasticity of supply and its determinant so first is ability of sellers to change the amount of the good they produce basically changing the quantity they are supplying 
so this is a way in which they can basically uh, affect the price elasticity so if you will just uh, reduce the supply of the good yeah then you can change its elasticity and time period is basically the similar thing as we did in previous case for the demand that when there is long run in long run the supply or the demand both are more elastic so elasticity no matter whether it is demand or supply elasticity will increase in long run basically uh, elasticity is higher in long run case now this is the uh, basically formula for the same percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price now let's look at the applications of supply demand and their elasticity we will see this example uh, it goes like can good news for farming be bad news for farmers in this example what happens is that uh, the wheat farmers and market basically we are uh, looking the relationship between them so for wheat there is some university or any research organization for example university of agronomist they discover a new wheat hybrid that is more productive than existing varieties so basically you can produce more wheat with the help of this new research or new innovation invention now of course this is good news for farming in agriculture or for farming it is good news in that area that there is kind of new innovation new invention for farming but the question that arises is can this good news for farming be a bad news for farmers so to examine this to examine such questions if you face in your exam so first thing is to see is whether the supply or demand curve shift which which curve changes change in what is there then determine the direction of the shift of the curve left or right increase or decrease whatever then use the supply and demand diagram to see how the market equilibrium changes due to the change as seen in this figure so first thing what happens is when demand is inelastic okay in this case demand is inelastic that is why it is comparatively steeper so <clears throat> when demand is inelastic an increase in supply leads to a large fall in price and a proportionately smaller increase in quantity sold as a result revenue falls from 300 to 220 so in elastic case so it is uh, demand is inelastic so this uh, basically implies that the change in quantity demanded will be less than the change in uh, proportion change in the price so as price falls with a large amount the quantity demanded does not increase with that great magnitude and thus the revenue for the farmer will fall now why is this see we took the example that there is an innovation in the farming that now you can produce more wheat now as you can produce more wheat the supply curve is shifting towards right first thing that we need to examine is whether supply or demand curve shift in our case when you can produce more sh- uh, more wheat supply curve will shift towards right so the direction of change is right now we will see this diagram and check the equilibrium so first we were having this demand curve demand curve is same in both the cases before and after cases we have the same demand curve before the uh, innovation before the invention or the initial case was that we were on the supply curve s1 we were on the supply curve s1 and we had this equilibrium at dollar 3 and we were having this quantity demanded and supplied at 100 so equilibrium quantity was 100 price was 3 now this innovation occurred and the demand uh, the supply curve sorry the supply curve shifts towards the right and we have new equilibrium at 2 and the quantity equilibrium quantity is 110 110 now this leads to what this leads to a reduction in the revenue before the farmer was getting dollar 300 now he is getting 220 dollars so the revenue has fallen reduced reduction in revenue 
now let's look at the price elasticity compute the price elasticity of demand when there is a change in supply we will see that it is in elastic demand in elastic because the elasticity is less than 1 in elastic demand this is what case we are taking we are taking the case of inelastic demand and in this case we saw that this good news for innovation is bad for farmer since the revenue is reducing now here is another example why did opec fail to keep the price of oil high opec basically it is a kind of cartel for oil producing countries and they basically control the supply and thus the price of oil and this question basically <coughs> wants to know that why did opec fail to keep the price of oil high now supply and demand can behave differently in the short run and the long run as we know in short run both supply and demand for oil are relatively inelastic as we saw in earlier lectures that in short run elasticity is inelastic basically elasticity is low less than 1 but in long run both are elastic okay so so in this case for opec what happened was even if they did control the supply and managed to increase the price in short run this strategy will work since the demand and supply they are inelastic people cannot change cannot switch to other alternatives but in long run maybe there are more competition to opec and there are countries producing oil outside the opec thus increasing the supply and then reducing the price or the consumers have become more efficient in using the resource that is oil in this case so they can manage and their demand so basically they are reducing their demand so in long run two things could happen either the price or oh, sorry either the supply of oil will increase due to production outside the opec or consumers will make more efficient use of oil and thus reducing the demand in any case the price will decrease so they can't keep the price high for long run now third thing does drug interdiction increase or decrease drug related crime drug interdiction impact seller rather than buyers okay demand is unchanged because buyers the drug users the consumers of drugs they are not impacted in any way demand is unchanged same equilibrium price rises although quantity falls see the equilibrium quantity uh the equilibrium price will rise okay now the other thing is drug education it impacts the buyer drug education impacts the buyer rather than the seller so demand is change for drug education case equilibrium price and quantity are lowered why because the demand is reduced so equilibrium quantity will decrease obviously and price will also go down but in first case price might rise why because uh, the the supply is decreased see these two policies a comparison of these two policies in first case we can see that uh, the supply is decreased left for shift from s1 to s2 and this education case the demand is reduced from d1 to d2 so these two things are different uh, impacts on the drug consumption